Alright guys, today I'm going to show you guys how to kind of pivot the data so that you can uh, do mail merges or document merges. Uh, this is kind of an interesting situation I ran into at work. Uh, so we had a fundraiser where we were auctioning off items and we were storing the data in you know, the regular way it should be stored. Every record is uh, essentially a sale record. And so we have people appear multiple times but we need to send them receipts. If we use a mail merge on this kind of format here, then if someone bought more than one item, they will receive more than one email from us. Uh, it would be a lot better if they just received one email containing all the items that they bought. The format that's more conducive to that would be this one, where you have the person's name and then you have repeating fields for however many items they bought and the price of the item as well. This isn't the traditional way that data is stored, uh, but it is kind of how it's used for reports or to um, just send things out for merges. Uh, if this list was significantly longer, it would take a very long time to do this by hand. So I came up with a formula-like way of taking care of this, and I'll go ahead and go through that with you guys today. Uh, we'll be using uh, really two formulas um, is transpose and filter or uh, combining those two formulas um, it's not something you can do in Excel uh, very easily or at least I'm not aware of without writing a macro but in Google spreadsheets you can kind of just write out the formula for it um, so go ahead and just pull in all the unique names using the unique formula here then we'll do a VLOOKUP for the email so that we can kind of just send it out. And I'm going to use a um, array formula to do this. So if there is, uh, if so, if the list is really long, it'll also auto populate. Oh, whoops! Where did I mess up? Oh, okay. There it is. And you get a bunch of errors here because there's no one down here. You can actually just wrap the VLOOKUP in an if error. And if it's an error, then return nothing. Uh, now, this is uh, the fun part. We'll go ahead and do our filter and transpose. So if you notice for Emily Dickinson, she bought three items grammar book, birdcage, and a whip. Uh, so all you have to do is do a filter. So filter, and I'll show you guys uh, this in, in steps um, so it makes a bit more sense. So I want to filter uh, this range. Actually I'll do the I'll reference the column. And the condition will be if column A contains Emily's name. Notice that when you do filter, it returns every item that she bought, but it does it in a vertical way, right? So it's going in and just essentially filtering to only Emily and looking at just her items. The good thing about uh, Google Spreadsheet is that you can actually do the transpose in the formula. So I can just do transpose here. Wrap my filter in a transpose, and then I'll put everything uh, horizontally. And then now you have space for the other people. You have to drag down the formula. And then the items, you know, number, or however, however many items people bought. Uh, then do the same thing for price, and I'll do it a little bit more slowly this time. So here's price. Right. Essentially, I want to only show prices for items that Emily bought. So I'm going to go ahead and do a filter on these prices where I should, where the names, right? So essentially, I'm filtering this data where the names is equal to 
this person's name. And when I drag the formula, oh sorry, and then it'll show all three going vertically, but we want it to go horizontally to do a merge. So I need to do a transpose on that filter formula. And then oh, push everything over to the right. So this is price one, two, and then three. Okay. Um, if you kind of look at how the formula is written, right? It uh, let me select this. It's filtering this dependent on whether this is equal to my search, right, or my criteria here. Uh, I left my so when I pull this down, since it's a relative cell reference, this will become F three which is John Greenleaf Whitaker, then F4, then F5, right? So I'll go ahead and drag that down. Notice F3, so it's referencing this one now because we dragged it down, so on and so forth. And now you're able to merge this. You can copy it over to Excel and merge into a Word document where it could be put into a receipt uh, and, it's more, and it's a lot easier to organize the receipt in one document and then email it to everyone um, versus doing it, you know, in this method. Uh, all right. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave it in the comment box. Have a good day.